The design of our body is a source of constant amazement. But the only thing we think about looking at someone else and ourselves is whether the body is beautiful or not. And it's not because we are so narrow-minded. Our instincts are the ones to blame. We are simply programmed to look for beauty. Fit body and smooth skin signal that this good-looking individual is healthy and suitable for reproduction. Beauty basically has always reflected this sexual component. It's always been about reproduction, about being fit for procreation, both for men and for women. Is it a suitable partner or not? We decide that in an instant, because our brain just doesn't do anything else. As soon as we satisfied it in food terms, it goes to the next problem, how to pass its genome on to the next generation. It's actually a biological instinct, nothing more. Beautiful people get married more easily. They have better jobs and earn more money. Sociologists keep confirming it every year. And it's not so much about the beauty itself as about the confidence it gives to a person. But if doing sports doesn't get you where you want, plastic surgery is always there at your service. Take this modern girl with extra small cup size. No matter what she eats, be it all cabbages, her breasts won't grow. She feels very insecure about it. And correcting the size and shape of her breasts can help her integrate into society, fix her sexual life and self-perception. It can make all the difference. Most of the time we achieve big success. Because a woman instantly becomes happy, she starts to like herself, to pick different clothes, her behavior changes as well. We can keep telling each other that we prefer natural beauty, but we can't ignore the facts. The number of plastic surgery grows up to 40% every year. Breast augmentation is one of the most popular surgeries. This is how modern implants look. They are made out of bio-inert silicone, a material that doesn't trigger rejection. But in the beginning of the 20th century, the most unusual things were used to make the breasts look bigger. Ivory, glass balls, rubber, ox tendons, fur, styrofoam, and paraffin wax. Usually it resulted in serious infections or even the death of the patient. In the race for the perfect body, modern women obviously run less risks, but they still do. This beautiful girl, Marina, is a wife of a Russian musician, a leader of a popular band. She is one of the few women who talk openly about their plastic surgery. I felt weird. After giving birth, after breastfeeding, I felt weird that my breasts became different. Their shape changed, their size changed, and I felt uncomfortable. I was impatient, and I waited for a whole year to pass so I could go and do the surgery. Following the advice of her friends, Marina went to Paris for breast augmentation. The next morning after the surgery, she was discharged from the clinic. But almost as soon as the girl flew back to Moscow, she developed complications. Incorrect positioning of the implant prevented tissues and vessels from healing. Her Moscow doctor insisted on getting rid of the newly acquired beauty. So he tells me this, and I'm saying, listen, I don't want to. I don't want to get another surgery, then wait, then do it all over again. And he said, OK, let's try and fight this off. Let's try to use antibiotics. If it goes away, great. If not, you can redo everything in a year or two. So I had to take these crazy amounts of antibiotics for 10 days. But thank God, everything went away. I got better. I used to go to him twice a day just to clean the sutures. And then about a year and a half later, he performed another surgery to fix my breasts. Incorrect implant placing is one of the major reasons for reoperation. Marina had to change her implants. The new implants will probably stay with her for the rest of her life. 
On the subject of implant replacement, I can say that first of all, they are not tires. They don't need to be changed according to the season. And modern manufacturers, modern companies that produce these implants are so advanced that they give a lifetime warranty on their products. So after placing these implants, we give our patients a special passport with a lifelong warranty. Every implant has a serial number. They are like high-end materials and car parts that under favorable circumstances will never require replacement. You already met Akmal, and this is his beautiful partner, Annie. We invite them to take part in our experiment on testing the strength of silicone implants that are meant to serve their owner her whole life. For the most part, women are afraid of the implant rupturing as a result of a blow or a fall. Right now, Annie is imitating exactly this kind of situation. A strong blow with a three kilogram baseball bat didn't cause any harm to the tested object. The girl was seriously fired up, but the implant still held out. But there are more astonishing demonstrations. There was a story two years ago when Israel was bubbling with another series of local conflicts. This woman, a mother of many children, was cooking something in the kitchen for her kids when a bomb blew up and a fragment of it flew in the window and hit her in the heart area. And the fragment got stuck in the silicone implant. Blowing up a bomb in the studio was a bit too much. We went with firing an air pistol. Akmal basically Swiss cheese the implant from a short distance. Here, look, with all the bullets fired, there's not a single exit hole. Nice. Women can work as bodyguards. These things make you safe. And the final test? Let's see how big of a load the implant can hold. You see? Our total weight with Annie is 160 kilograms, and it held out very well. Actually, durability of implants is a question that has long been bothering both women and men. Men, too, wouldn't mind adding some extra volume with the help of silicone. There are new, advanced implants for pectoral muscles. So today, instead of going to the gym, skinny young men can simply get some implants and have a sculptured body. There are face implants available too. Cheekbone implants, chin implants, jaw implants that visually enhance the jawline. There are also Implants that are used in urology to improve a man's sexual life or to achieve some aesthetic goals, and so on. In 1973, women all over the world got a new enemy, cellulite. Up until that moment, few people cared about orange peel skin on women's thighs. But in 1973, a famous cosmetologist and an owner of a beauty salon in New York City, Nicole Ronsert, waged the war on cellulite. Cellulite is a slang word. If we talk about cellulite, it's actually a disorder, inflammation of subcutaneous fat. But it so happened that this name was widely adopted for gynoid lipodystrophy. So what causes cellulite? Or to put it correctly, lipodystrophy. When we gain weight, adipose cells in the subcutaneous layer expand unevenly, compressing adjacent blood and lymphatic vessels and causing edema. This leads to problems with cell metabolism, and over time, rigid fibrous tissue is formed around them that compresses cells and causes the orange peel syndrome.
Today, a procedure called endermolift, or vacuum roller massage, is used to fight cellulite. The working part is called a handpiece. It has a screen and a treatment chamber. These rollers are mobile, and the skin and the subcutaneous fat get into this treatment chamber, where they're subjected to a thorough massage. The procedure is concluded with lymphatic drainage, or drainage of excessive liquid from the body. About 90% of women have cellulite, whereas men aren't predisposed to it at all due to the hormonal differences. The more peculiar thing is the fact that the main weapon against cellulite vacuum roller massager was invented by a man, Luis Paul Gattay. Although, as it often happens, by accident. He was an engineer. After he got in a car accident, he was staying in a rehab clinic together with all these women with burns. He noticed that physical therapy and a vacuum massage on the burns, it not only made the texture of the skin smoother, but also improved skin elasticity. If the burn was on a thigh, for example, the cellulite would be gone. He was a smart guy, and he decided that he can create something like this to help women stay slim and beautiful and fight off the ever more pressing problem of cellulite. Louis Paul Gattay quickly started to work on his discovery. He developed and patented the Endermolift device. Today, it's used not only for treating cellulite, but also for recovering after physical exercise. Just imagine, you eat as much delicious food as you want without bothering yourself with sports. And as soon as you notice your belly growing or your thighs getting bigger, you simply make an injection of a miraculous drug and become slim again. Wouldn't it be just perfect? Our next protagonist is Sergei. He couldn't find time in his tight work schedule to go to the gym. And looking in the mirror one day, he found himself having a substantial belly. Sergei decided to seek help from cosmetologists. And he found out that injections can substitute weights and diets. I recommended Sergei to go with chemical liposuction. He doesn't have visceral obesity. The excessive fat is built up underneath his skin, not around internal organs. So this procedure can solve his problem. Everyone has heard at least once about regular liposuction, when the excess fat is extracted during surgery. But what is chemical liposuction? It's the miraculous injection we talked about. This injection breaks down the subcutaneous fat with the help of special substances contained in it. A fat cell pops up and its debris are excreted naturally in the course of three to four days with the help of organs, the organs responsible for removing waste, kidneys and liver. If afterwards you follow a healthy diet, do exercise and generally take care of your health, the result will last for a long time. Of course, one injection is not enough. You need several procedures and healthy liver and kidneys that will have to remove all the waste from your body. Also, this procedure cannot take care of extensive fat deposits. In Sergei's case, to finish off the remaining fat, one more method from the arsenal of modern cosmetology is used, ultrasonic cavitation. Ultrasonic cavitation is another procedure for dealing with localized fat deposits. The main principle here is ultrasonic waves that penetrate the skin and make the water oscillate. The resulting shock wave destroys the adjacent fatty tissue. By the way, the number of patients who go to surgeons and cosmetologists to remove excessive fat grows 80% every year. Beauty. It's, it's when your boobs are big, your ass is big, and everything is big, like we look. These girls strongly disagree with modern canons of beauty. While everyone is trying to get rid of the slightest hints of extra weight or skin irregularities, they take care of their every kilogram and every fat roll. Yulga and Lana are the solo dancers of the Ha Ha Tushki dance show of plump girls. They are bound by contract to have ample curves, and losing weight is strictly prohibited. The show has a lot of loyal fans that can duly appreciate the unconventional beauty of the girls.
In the beginning of this documentary, we said that humans are genetically programmed to choose beautiful partners, making sure that their offspring is healthy and well. But we still haven't answered another important question. Why does the perception of beauty constantly change? For example, why Yulia and Lana would be considered a standard of beauty 200 years ago. Heavily built women with sizable virtues. Let's put it like this. The type of women preferred by Rubens were in demand back in the day. Why? It's also because of reproduction. Those were the times of starvation. For thousands of years, lean body had been associated with sickness and generally with health problems, hunger, and poverty. So for many centuries, men favored plump, chubby, well-fed women. Corpulence used to be a sign of prosperity and success. Today has a contrary meaning. Not everyone can afford fitness gyms and the services of cosmetologists and plastic surgeons. Our success and health are represented with a fit and well-shaped body. So the change in the beauty perception is nothing more than a mechanism of evolution. It's the way humanity evolves. It leads to changes in our perception but most importantly, in our brain. We perform selection inside our species, a very serious artificial selection. If we use a metaphor, all of us live in a dove coat, and we, the dove, are selected according to certain characteristics, hairiness of extremities or the color of feathers. But we are both doves and breeders at the same time. We peck to death those with the wrong feathers. That's the trick. It means that we both perform and undergo evolution. In any case, our longing for beauty made a whole industry come to life that both serves us and controls us at the same time. And this industry will only continue to develop dictating us new rules and offering us new possibilities.